Hello everyone. So I thought I'd do something a bit different again today. We're getting back into the tech reviews and today I wanted to unbox and review one of the cheapest laptops, certainly one of the cheapest Chromebooks I've ever found. So Today we're looking at the Galaxy Chromebook Go, um, which is basically on the Samsung website for about £300. However, for quite a while they were doing a deal where if you bought certain Samsung phones, you actually got this for free. So my wife bought uh, a new Flip 5 and uh, she just got this for free. So as far as I'm concerned, it's free, but also it's much, much cheaper elsewhere. If you have a look on the likes of Facebook Marketplace at the moment, obviously lots of other people have also got this for free with their phones and are selling them at around 100 to 150 pounds, still sealed, brand new. You can also go to the likes of CEX and get them grade A uh, with the CEX warranty and everything else for around 100 pounds. So needless to say, there is a lot of opportunity here to get a very cheap, laptop. Uh, I've never actually used Chrome OS in any real capacity. I've played around with trying to get it installed in the early days using like Chromium OS and that sort of thing and the open source versions. Never really got it to work. And that was that. So today we're going to have a look at this laptop. We're going to decide if it's actually a functional laptop. We're going to really have a good review and see is it worth getting even at such a cheap price. But we're also going to take a look at Chrome OS. Is Chrome OS something that you could use for daily driving? I could definitely see this kind of laptop being something for kids at school, or maybe if you just need something to be able to get you online. There's lots of use cases where this could work. But would you be better off just getting an iPad or another secondhand cheap laptop? Let's take a look and uh, yeah, let's see what we get in the box and see if it's worth it. All right, so let's take a look at the box. I will say that Samsung have gone away with any plastics and it's kind of this like raw cardboard, which is really nice to see, and then just a little printing on it. I actually really like this box, it's quite nice. Specific laptop that we're looking at today has an 11.6 inch HD screen, we'll get into that later, a uh, Intel Celeron processor, four gigabytes of RAM, and 64 gigabytes of EMMC storage. So for those that know what that is, this is not a particularly fast laptop out of the gate, but maybe Chrome OS will surprise us. Uh, and maybe, you know, it's good at eking out performance from those specs. So let's open up the box and take a look. And inside we have more cardboard, which is really nice to see. Let's see what we have in terms of accessories. So in here we have the charging brick which is just a USB-C charging brick by the looks of it. Let's see what we have. So it's a Samsung branded super fast charger, USB-C, and the specs we have. So it'll output 15 watts or it'll output 45 watts. So, you know, 45 watt charger, that's pretty good. That'll actually be quite useful in general, especially as you know, most phones don't actually come with chargers anymore, so this could be a good universal USB-C charger to have in the house. Next up, let's have a look in this little cardboard packaging. Um, and if we open up here, that we've just got, yeah, USB-C charging cable, so we're going to be charging by USB-C. Um, yeah, I guess it's probably a decent length. We'll have a look at that in a bit. And then, ah, oh, just a bit of filler cardboard. The QR code on it. Someone scan that and let me know what that leads to. And then in here we have, I'm guessing this is some paperwork, probably different guides and stuff. Yeah, quick start guides and that sort of thing. We won't be reading that, that's for short. Sure. <laughs> and then here we have the laptop itself with some more cardboard as well. So let's do that and get that out of the way. And straight off, it is a very small laptop, as you can see. Has a nice little sheath. So let's get it out of there. And it is Samsung Chromebook. There is not a whole lot 
to speak about, really. Um, so let's get that off there. And this is the keyboard layout. Keys don't feel too bad. Kind of standard for cheap laptop. We'll take a look at that more later. Decent enough sized trackpad for the size of the computer. I'm not sure if the Intel Celeron sticker is worth it. You don't really want to be bragging about that, but such is life. And this is our 11.6 inch HD screen. Uh, yeah, those are some serious bezels. I think you could probably fit a 14 inch screen in the same space and have less bezels. That's a little disappointing. A little webcam up the top as well. Let's take a look at the ports. So on one side we do have USB-A, which is going to be useful. USB-C for the charging. We'll have to see if that's full USB-C as well. And a micro SD card slot, I think. Perhaps a microphone as well. And on the other side, headphone jack and the lock mount as well. So not a huge range of ports. There's no HDMI, there's no video out at all. Uh, but let's, uh, let's take a look. I think it's probably going to need a charge. Yeah, it's going to need to be charged up, so let's get it on charge and uh, get started with the setup. Okay, so we're all charged up now, so let's give boot it up and have a look at Chrome OS. Again, I will say that it is all plastic. There's definitely no metal casing or anything, so it looks nice, but as soon as you touch it, you realize it's not. <laughs> but there we go. We are straight away, I guess, booted and ready to get started, so let's take a look at the setup procedure for Chrome OS. Uh, okay, first we have to obviously get our um, get on, online. This is one thing that obviously, as far as I know, Chrome OS is very online heavy still, and you kind of need to be online to be able to do anything. So we will start by connecting to our Wi-Fi. And I will say, already starting to use the keyboard, and it's not a great kind of experience. Um, this is interesting. That was weird. Did you see that? Yeah, the it came up with a certificate error for what I presume is a Google website. That's not a great start, but okay. Uh, we'll accept those. We're not going to get send performance information. Let's get in. And of course, first thing it does is it's probably going to have to um, do some updates. So let's see. Okay, apparently it didn't. So we'll uh, see what happens as we go along. But yes, it's going to be for me. Interesting that you can set it up as a for a child and digital ground rules to help children play, explore, and do schoolwork at home. So definitely very geared towards kids, which is, I think, a good use case for this kind of laptop. Um, can also set up just as a guest or enterprise enrollment. So I guess if you were doing kind of just online admin work, again, this could work for you, and maybe even your organization supports it. Right, let's log into my Google account. And then we are logged in so we can start syncing things like Chromebook apps and settings. I won't have any of those, but I guess we can also sync in our Chrome browser, which will be more useful. So I will accept that. We will get that all synced in. And we're also going to have access to the Google Play Store. So Android apps do work on this as well. I was interested to see if it would support this lower end device, but it does. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it also lets you back up to Google Drive. Now, this is very good if you're kind of already into the Google ecosystem. Um, and uh, we will just accept and sign away our life, I'm sure. But it does instantly kind of encourage you to actually start downloading Android apps, which is interesting. So, you know, you've got Disney Plus, Sketchbook, Among Us, Terraria. Terraria stardew valley so you can use android games on here and we are going to do a separate video to see what gaming we can actually get out of this device but for, to, for now we're going to skip this we're going to do it later um and interesting google assistant unable to load this is not a great experience so far i will say but we're going to skip that as well we're not interested um we can also connect our phone so you can text from your computer, share your internet connection, reply to conversation notifications, and unlock your Chromebook with your phone. Again, that's kind of interesting. So it's already found my phone, um, and 
yeah, let's let's do that. We will uh, we'll see what that experience looks like. Um, and your Chrome, you can then also sign up um, if you want to get Chromebook tips, offers, and updates. So we're gonna we're gonna skip that as well. Uh, and uh, hopefully that's that's it. Okay, so we are into Chrome OS. It's automatically pulling in my plugins for Chrome, which uh, one of which is AdBlocker. Uh, but let's have a look at what we have in general outside of that. So this is kind of our welcome screen. It's already getting a few pop-ups and stuff. Uh, you can then unlock your smart lock is turned on, so you can unlock it with your phone. Uh, I guess this is phone hub which gives you access to what's going on on your phone um, and you've also got some stuff going on here as well looks like the google store notifications are doing some bits and pieces well this is interesting this is definitely kind of an interesting layout again very heavy on the um, google services along the bottom for some reason we have two icons for gmail here what does what's the difference here okay so it seems like one opens it as an app and the other opens it as a tab in Chrome. Uh, but we do have this getting started hub. Uh, it gives you all the sort of pretty helpful information. Probably should read it. We're not going to. I am interested by this perks screen though. What do we get as perks? So we can get 25% off Luma Fusion on your Chromebook. Interesting. Uh, your Chromebook comes with 100 gig of cloud storage. Endure plenty of space for all your files and photos at no cost for 12 months. That's kind of cool. You also get three months of YouTube Premium, which is kind of cool. So with those together, that's probably some extra value there, especially if you are getting these devices new. We'll probably enable those. Why not? But we'll do that later. Let's have a look what else is going on. There's some information here about what's new and all that sort of stuff. So... This is kind of our first look into Chrome and the setup experience. It seems very basic. Uh, for example, how do I get to my actual like apps? I'm not sure. Maybe this, okay, this opens up into your apps and you've got kind of everything that you would have pulled in from Chrome and presumably you can install other things as well. Okay, let's start off by doing some kind of basic tasks to do a bit of benchmarking and see what the results are like. Okay, so first up, let's see how well it handles full HD video. Um, and also let's check out the audio. Of course, the go-to, it's gotta be some Crab Rave. So let's see how it handles this video. Okay, that's enough of that. So I will say that, yes, it works. Uh, the speakers are completely serviceable. It functions. Would I want to be listening to music using them? No. Um, would I want to be watching much on this screen? Kind of also, no. Um, the screen's viewing angles aren't the best, as you can kind of see it very quickly uh, it gets washed out. And uh, there was definitely a little bit of kind of tearing and generally not a great full hd experience the screen itself as well isn't actually full hd this is the thing that i was talking about earlier um it is not a full hd screen so if we go into display you'll see that the screen is actually about 720p nearly ish uh so it's definitely not full hd uh so if you're looking to have a good viewing experience like you might get on say an ipad this is not the place for that, that's for sure. Still, it's serviceable. If you needed to watch a video and play some music, you definitely could. Okay, so what about the webcam? Well, let's load up Google Meet and have a look and see what kind of uh, webcam we're gonna be getting with this. Uh, yes, we'll allow, to, and we'll allow, and we'll allow it to show us notifications, and let's see what happens. Uh, at the moment, I'm getting a blank screen. Oh, it is loading. Okay, it's just taking a minute. Um, quite a while, in fact. Uh, and there we go. There is me. Uh, hello. Uh, yeah, okay. The quality is grainy. It's blown out for sure. Very 
uh, light background. It's not great. It's not great. It's also quite laggy. Like, it's not running very smoothly. But in a pinch, again, if you just needed it for school or something, it works. What about multitasking? What can we actually kind of squeeze performance-wise out of this? Well, I'm going to run some synthetic benchmarks on this. It's very hard to find good benchmarks that use the browser. But we're going to run a few and we're going to compare it to a couple of other devices that I have. And yeah, we'll see how it performs. Hello, everyone. So future me here to talk about benchmarking. As I kind of briefly mentioned, finding a good benchmark solution that uses the web works on Chrome, but also works on other devices was incredibly difficult to do. And in fact, actually, the original benchmarks that I was using, uh, specifically BMark, which tests graphic performance, and Speedometer, which tests the responsiveness of web apps, uh, both of them gave really weird results with my iPad Air scoring much higher than anything else, which was just odd. So I had to kind of discount those tests because it didn't make any sense to me. And what I left with was basically two other benchmarking tests that I did find that gave pretty decent uh, example of the performance that you can expect. So I benchmarked it against my desktop. All of the specs will be down below. My um, iPad M1 my MacBook uh, Pro with the M1 Pro chip and 32 gig of RAM, and my MacBook Air with the just the standard M1 chip and 8 gig of RAM. So with those four devices and then the Chromebook itself, um, we got some interesting results, and I think that kind of kind of seems to line up more correctly. So first off, we used Basemark, which kind of gives a good test across HTML5 in general graphics, CPU intensive tasks, all sorts of things going on with that benchmark. All the links will be down below, of course. Um, and what we found is that, you know, you were getting well under a third of the performance that you would from an iPad Air uh, with the M1 chip, although M1 chip in general. So you could definitely get a secondhand iPad or a secondhand MacBook Air with this chip in it and you'd be seeing significantly better performance. The other test that we did do is a silver test which does basically CPU benchmarking in the browser and again as kind of expected the Chromebook lags significantly behind. Uh, the iPad Air was obviously thermal throttled quite a lot in this in this test uh, but as you can see with the Air uh, the MacBook Air even though it's the same chip there's a much more uh, space for higher performance with the better heat distrib distribution um, through the device. So all in all, it's interesting. Uh, it definitely shows that multitasking is not something that you're going to be able to do with this device. I will leave the spreadsheet down below with all the details as well, so go check that out. But suffice to say, single tasks is where this laptop is going to be useful for. So that's going to kind of wrap it up there for our unboxing and brief look into Chrome OS. Like I say, I am going to do a video on gaming on this, and we'll also do probably another look at the Play Store and what Android apps can run on here. Is that worth it? Will this make that a bit more of a usable device? Definitely comment down below if you have any recommendations for Chrome OS, any ideas, any tips, any tricks, any apps that are must look at, um, because this is my first look into Chrome OS, and I definitely be interested for those that are a bit more seasoned with the operating system. Now, can I recommend this? What would I say about this device? Honestly, if you're looking for something that you can get pretty cheap, including free, it's probably actually worth it. If you want something that's just a computing device that connects you to the internet, you're going to want to be able to do some basic word processing. You're going to want to be able to go on like Facebook and social media. You're going to want to maybe watch the occasional video. And you want something that's got a decent battery life and a decent um, kind of portability. It is very small after all. Then, yeah, I'd say it's actually kind of worth it. If you can get it for a good price, it's worth it. Is it worth the £300 that Samsung charged directly? No. No, you can definitely get much better, much more feature-rich, full-windows laptops for that price. 
I would steer clear of it if you're thinking about buying it directly. I wouldn't personally spend more than maybe a hundred pounds on this. No. So keep an eye out. You might be able to get a good deal and you might be able to pick up a great little laptop for someone for school or just because this you need a easy to use get you online kind of device uh, but otherwise look at windows laptops look at more feature rich laptops this is definitely not worth it if you're paying 300 pounds so thank you very much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video uh, I, it's kind of one of the ones that is a bit more in depth it's a review that's really kind of trying to do a bit of benchmarking even if it is synthetic and it's not like really going to give you a full idea, but hopefully it gives you a good idea compared to other devices. And uh, yeah, hopefully kind of a good exploration of this device. We are kind of trying to head to our next goal, which is 500 subscribers. We are still a very small channel. So if you have enjoyed this content, please do hit that subscribe button. It really means a lot and it's going to help me greatly. Uh, I think at the time of recording we're at about 390 subscribers so really great if we can hit that 500 this kind of next couple of months. So please do that. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time where we kind of push this a bit more to its limits and see what we can actually do with it. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon.